This is me when I was 19 years old and I first moved to New York City. Um, I used to play poker as a way to, uh, to make money and I was very, very good at it. I was incredible. Um, I had this uh, sort of innate ability to read people and this like just willingness to play. I was not afraid. I was not afraid to play. And so I got really good at poker and for the first little while, I did really, really well. I started to do pretty bad at the end there, but I did really, really well and it was a, there was a good period of time there where I just couldn't lose. I could not lose a game. I would show up every night and I would win a couple hundred bucks in a poker game every night. So I would, uh, there was basically not, I, I felt invincible. You never feel like you just like, you really have something down. You have mastered this thing and you are good at it. And, and that confidence actually helps carries you through, helps makes you better perform in whatever that thing is because you believe in yourself. And I really believed in myself. There was this game, I don't, there was this game that, that I got invited to and it was like this mafia run poker game. Uh, I got invited by this gal who was a dealer and you had to have like high stakes to play and I, I'd go there and these guys would have like big wads of money and slick back hair and gold chains and big Italian guys. You had Vinny the Limo, Sonny Franchisi, Frankie Bananas, Pauly, uh, Pauly Two-Tone, Jimmy Cupcake, you had all these guys. They actually had these names. I was Johnny, how you doing? Because I was really nervous, I was really young and I would always, I'd just say, how you doing, how you doing? I'd just say it every time, anytime I want to plot, how you doing? I just kept saying it because that's what they said. Uh, so they called me Johnny, how you doing? But I couldn't win at this game for the life of me. Could not win at this poker game. And I, I couldn't really figure out why. And so what I did was I decided that I would start, I read in a book by a guy called Barry Greenstein. He's like a poker player. Uh, he wrote this book. Um, and he said, you know, what you ought to do is show up late. After everyone's been playing a while, after they've had a chance to lose some money, after they're loose, you know, and you'll be fresh. So. I'd go to sleep at 6 p.m. on Saturday night, I'd show up at 2 a.m. after these guys had all been drinking, and I would just clean up, because that was the right time for me to play at that game. Time, it was the right time for me to be there. Timing is very important. I'm going to talk about timing in a second just now. It, the truth of the matter was that they were better than me. That was the problem. I was not good enough to be playing in that game, but once they were drunk, I could, I could play. So that was the right time for me to play in that game. Um, I have a, a skincare company. We have a skincare company. And it's called Boom by Cindy Joseph. And I tell this story a lot uh, when, it, when I'm on stage in relationship to e-commerce because it's very, very relevant. So in America, in Western society in general, uh, the way that society views men and women is a little bit different, right? This is not my viewpoint. I don't subscribe to these viewpoints. Uh, but this is, this is the commonly held viewpoint in society that men are valued for production. So as we make money, as we get older, as we produce more, we get more social power, we get more social value, we're considered better, suave, debonair as we age, right? Women are valued in society for youth and beauty. And as they get older, what society tells them is that your power, that, you, that this power that we have given you is diminishing, it's going away. This experience that's happening to you is bad, it's fucked up, it's wrong, anti-age, anti-wrinkle. And so we have, we have 80 million baby boomers in our society, right? Half of them are women, that's the largest portion of our, of our population. Half of them are women, and they're all having the experience of their hair graying, their skin wrinkling, and their bodies aging on the outside faster than they are on the inside, and society treating them differently as a result of it and telling them that this experience is bad and wrong. And we don't subscribe to that viewpoint. We think that's not the way it is. That's not, uh, uh, we don't think it works that way. We think that, you know, you get better as you age and you are beautiful just as you are. And wrinkles are a sign of a good, high quality lived life and not something that you should necessarily try to avoid unless you want to. And so we created a, a um, my business partner and I created a skincare company called Boom by Cindy Joseph. And the core value proposition is not the skincare. Yes, our skincare is high quality. It's all sheer. You can see right through it. It's about celebrating you as you are. It's not about covering yourself up. But the core value proposition of this business is the messaging. It's you can be a part of a community of people who are um, having a conversation with you that no one else is really having with you. And you can like, so, so anyways, the point is that this business took off really, really quickly. And it went really, really well and it's like soaring. And the reason is because it was the right time for that message. It was the right time for that message to that group of people. It was the right time for me to be playing poker. It's the right time for you to be in an e-commerce business right now. So where we are in the life cycle of e-commerce, when I got started online, 4% of transactions were done online in the United States. Of all transactions, 4% of them were done online. In the last 
six years, it's doubled. E-commerce has doubled in the last six years in America. 8% of online transactions. There's a book called Crossing the Chasm, and they talk about the technology adoption curve. More people are adopting technology. They're more willing to um, buy things on the internet. They're more willing to enter their credit card details in online. They're not afraid of that. And when I talk to you guys about tomorrow morning, I'm going to talk to you about the future of e-commerce and where things are going. Uh, and it might freak you out a little bit. It's actually a good thing, and it's cool, and it's, it is kind of wild where I see things going. Uh, and I'm really excited to share that with you. And it also has to do with why I think you should get off of Amazon um, when you can. I think you should maximize Amazon as much as you can to start and then move your business off of Amazon, which I'll show you how to do. But I went to Amazon, the number one retailer in the world. What they told us was that it's going to double again. So by 2017, in the next three years, global e-commerce, global e-commerce, not just American e-commerce, will go from 1.25 trillion to 2.35 trillion from 2014 to 2017. You are not too late. The piece of the, the pie is only getting bigger. There's only more opportunity now. It's actually easier to get started now than it was when I got started. I had to like build a website on RTML, which is some language that only one guy in Russia knew. It was like, like it was seriously, I had to call this guy Istvan and like get him to send me a book. It was crazy. But it's a lot easier now. You've got technology. And it used to be that as an e-commerce retailer, Istvan was a cool dude, by the way. Um, as an e-commerce retailer, we only had query-based traffic. We only had, and what the difference is, Query-based traffic is what traditional e-commerce businesses are built on. It's what Amazon businesses are built on. Someone goes to Amazon, they type in something, you show them something, right? They type in dog bowl and you show them a dog bowl. That's visibility for your offer based on a query. That used to be all we had. Now, we have multi-data point contextual targeting. We have the ability to target people based on context super effectively, which we'll talk about in the next session. So our opportunity for getting in front of people, our channels of visibility, like my channel of visibility was the flea market, our channels for visibility are only expanding. And we're of the very few people in this world who know how to take advantage of this. What's going on over there? You guys taking notes? OK, cool. That's good. That's what I want. That's what I've asked of you, is to have a good time. You're doing great. Let's three, two, one. Give us some love. Nice. Um, so there's more opportunity now than there has ever been before. Uh, Facebook, we, we went to Facebook. And um, Facebook, they're actually really, really cool. Facebook is getting bad raps online, you know, because they shut down all the drag queen profiles. My wife is in the circus, and uh, there's a whole thing. Anyways, this, this, there's a lot of, it's true. I won't even get into the story, but what I will tell you is that you could not find a nicer company. You could not find more willing to help, wa wanting to serve like cooler people than Facebook, and they get what's going on and they would like to support us e-commerce retailers. And one of the things that Justin and I will talk to you about later is something that we're doing um, with their blessing that'll help us all out, and, and it's really cool.